I am going to change the presenter and, well, Chuck, did you come in as a presenter for me? Well, I think so. I've, I was thinking that I'm on there. Let's yeah, make sure. Fine. Let's just see if I can switch this. Okay. Give it a whack. See what am happens. I in as an attendee? We're on the, there we go, show my screen. There you go. Slide show. Let's start the show. Okay, I think we're together now. Okay, yep, I think so. And just audio check. Yeah, we need a quick audio check. <clears throat> uh -huh. We have Donna and Terry on. There you go. Greetings from North Dakota. A bit warm up there. Uh, you guys burning up north? Well, we are burning down here in the south. 100 degrees today here. Ouch. Ouch. So if we could get somebody to stick something in the question and answer box that says they're doing all right. And, and we got other audio. While we get that going, we have a poll to launch immediately. So Let's we're going do to get it. busy. So we want to know, do you currently own the email module? Yes, no, no, but we'd like to. <coughs> so go ahead and vote on this, if you would please. And I'll watch in the question and answer box for our audio. Oh, Terry says it's humid. Swam so <laughs> this morning. Ohio is fine. Okay, very she good. Well, most you can hear me. Good deal. <laughs> good, good. Well, it looks like we've got most everybody on. Is that a new view of the poll where we see exactly the numbers on that? That's nice. Or is that the panelist view, Lori? I think that must be the panelist view because that's not what I'm seeing. Okay, go ahead and show. I wonder if I'm the panelist, but anyway. 94% of you have the email module, so again, that's great, and uh, so we're going to get right to work and make sure you're using it. Um, what can you do with the email module? This is a repeat, but we wanted to make sure we had this down. There's two different sides of the email module that is connected with student manager, and again, we're really talking student manager now, not necessarily the ACE web, which has a couple of email tools for faculty uh, to use, but we're talking about student manager. Functional administrative is probably the biggest one, and that is certainly number one is got to be emailing receipts. To be able to send your students their confirmation via email, save that 44 cents now. Uh, course level announcements, again, great tool for sending class level blasts um, uh, out to people. The class has changed. Make sure to remember to do yada yada. There's a parking lot closed. Park somewhere else. Um, mass email. We're going to talk about that mass email tool uh, because, again, this is a dangerous, dangerous tool in that uh, powerful and dangerous in that you can end up shooting yourself in the foot by either uh, sending an email out that is just literally wrong, uh, sending email out to people who shouldn't get them or don't want them, and being in danger of being blacklisted. So we'll talk about that at the close. Uh, so that is a tool you want to use carefully, uh, wisely. Uh, it's not just because it's cheap. You can be sloppy about it and, and uh, not pay attention. Merge mail emails, uh, we're getting into a little bit more advanced stuff here. We'll hit that real lightly because there's actually a webinar in the archive that talks about the email tips that I think we go into that a bit more. And then certainly emailing faculty. Now. I'm going to ask real quickly here on a kind of a, just a hands up here, uh, a shout out on your hand up panel. How many people use the class level email? Well, actually, skip that. Never mind. I, 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 there's a spot later where we can ask that. Okay. You know what, we actually have a poll for that. We do. Well, then I'll wait for the class level question. I think you've got that later on. Okay. Other things that we're doing. Uh, is the marketing. <clears throat> and again, that's kind of where the mass email comes in. Email blasts, merged email, uh, and there are ways, uh, things that you can do with that, obviously. Do we, have a, do we have a mass on that? Do we have a poll question on that? I can't remember. No, no we don't. No. Okay. And then the idea that closing of general email rules and etiquette, and uh, some tips perhaps for those of you who might be wanting to do some more email marketing. So. What are we about? Thinking about email. There's the functional nuts and bolts of it, uh, the mechanics, understanding how it works in Aceware on Student Manager, and the idea of marketing. What it is you can do with it, what it might be able to do for your program. And obviously, uh, this is what 
uh, the potential exists to generate additional interest and sales of your programs. How do we know email works? Um, again, direct marketing association, I'm not quite sure how you do the dollar, and again, the idea of the dollar spent, um, I, I, again, I do caution people about just because they think it's cheap and it's great that it doesn't mean you don't do it right. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be getting into that. Uh, marketing Sherpa, uh, pay-per-click, ranked a close second, if using an in-house list. And again, we'll talk about what, what you need to be doing to make sure you're using it uh, today. 82% uh, of the U.S. adults have their email accounts at least once a week, and then we're going to basically say 100% of those adults are hacked if they get email they really don't want. And we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, what it is that you have to do, you need to make sure you get your email addresses. And again, and that's something that um, you need to make sure any printed forms you have have the email address, any kind of forms that shows or trade activities, chamber of commerce events, have that email address. Uh, and make sure you've got that on the, uh, on the contact. Um, Emailing to a student, uh, of course, you double click on the email on the student, and you can pop up a quick mail. Um, hopefully, everybody knows that. Um, emailing a class. I'm going to go ahead and let you do the poll question now, Lori. OK. On the other poll question. Do you use your email for administrative purposes, for registration, confirmations, rosters, etc., or do you use it for marketing purposes, or do you use it for both? I tried to give you some some choices. There you go. There. there you go. Okay, let's see what they what they say. So, by golly, Chuck, this is a new view for me because when I have the polls thing open on the toolbar, I can see it now too. Well, now mine still shows the email module question. Now, why is that one showing rather than yours of the, uh, the current Slide poll? Slide down a little bit to the next question. Uh, oh, poll. there are multiple polls. There you go. Uh -huh. Just for marketing, mostly for MN once in a while. OK, we've got kind of a mixed bag on that, but that's OK. We, we go think ahead we've got. Results with everybody. So we've got kind of a mixed bag on that. Let me jump to a name record. And again, for those of you that don't do uh, or for the name side of things, again, when you're on a name record, to launch a point-to-point -point email for a student, you just double click on their email, and it pops up the email uh, window where you can put it in. A couple of notes. Number one, you must have a subject, and you must have something in the body in order for it to be sent. So if you try to uh, just just uh, put a body note in or just put a subject, no body, it will not send the email. You can send yourself a copy. Uh, of course, email module does not have a sent category. If you need to make copies of what you send, do the also send me a copy checkbox. Uh, and again, I believe that's a preference that you can set. We'll show you in a second where. Uh, the ability to include your email signature line and the ability to include attachments. You can blind copy, or you can carbon copy. There is not a blind copy option on this particular email. All right, I'm going to cancel. Setting up. Under editing my user profile, there is a link here that you can say, email signature, uh, include my signature whenever you're email. If you're emailing out of student manager using that point to point, <clears throat> I would suggest going into your preference, making sure you have your profile set the way you want. And if you always want that added to your emails, uh, check the box there. OK, uh, course level emails. And again, we, we talked about that. Um, when you're in a class, or when you've got a class up and you need to do an email blast to them, you can go quick reports, send quick email to class. Um, we're going to go through that right now, send quick email to class, select all students. Um, the no answer allows you to choose by registration date. If you were sending an email out as kind of a mass welcome to the conference, blah, 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 and you send it out every Friday, that lets you just send to the new students. 
most of the time, I'm guessing people use this for mass announcements, um, you know, class closed, class open, class postponed, uh, venue information. When you say send email to class, it brings up, first of all, a list of everybody in the class, students that have email and students that don't have email. Well, this is a class where nobody of, of the two people in here have an email. So it's like there's no point. Uh, this wouldn't go to anybody. And that's the point of that. It allows you to identify who's got and who does not have email. Um, so again, you basically type in the information you want. You can choose to blind copy the class broadcast email to somebody. Uh, that's, that's a blind. And you can do attachments. And you can also send yourself a copy if you want. So. I'm going to pause if there's any questions going on about the two big administrative pieces right there. I any? haven't had any questions okay. from anybody yet, but if you have some, throw them in the box. Put them in the box. Get to them now. We'll do them at the very end. Uh, back to the uh, email to the class again. Uh, the idea is you can use this for marketing as well. And one of the big deals, if you've got a class that's a level one, level two, you've got everybody, you've got a class that's just finished that's a level one, and you want to now start a level two class, uh, you could do a blast to this class saying, hey, uh, we now have level two, the next class available to you. It's on such and such a time. Be there or be square. So again, that, that tool exists. Well, let's get back to the slideshow. And we've kind of gone through receipt. Ah, oh, we didn't get to receipts. Let's get back to a receipt. When you're on, Al, oh, this one won't work because we have no one in this class with an email address. And let's get somebody with it. Well, let's add somebody into it. Oh. Uh, Lori, tell me again how you worked this program. <laughs> Okay. So I know. Okay. Standard email receipt. When you have a person in the class and you want to email a receipt, uh, you have to make sure that, uh, first of all, um, if the person doesn't have an email, this is not going to show. Uh, be able to say, let you view the email before you send it. And if you want, you can send a calendar attachment file, a VCS, is it, Lori, that then will let them if they have Outlook connected to their Outlook calendar. For us Luddites who don't have Outlook, um, uh, that you're out of luck. Uh, standard email receipt, you can have multiple formats of email receipts. Uh, and again, so you can have either a standard or default, kind of like our default report and additional, or you can use user-defined. If you do user-defined, you then can go in and find uh, a different, uh, well, I don't have a good, Here's a confirmation body, and that's one that I've got a registration confirmation for a class, cancel it, and then you can also choose to print a regular receipt if you if you care. Okay, I'm kind of bouncing over the top here, Lori. Um, emailing confirmations and receipts, we reference that, the calendar attachment file. Um, which, again, drops it into the student's appointment calendar. Emailing confirmations. Now, the auto stamp feature, and I don't know whether many people use this. This is a, um, an optional field on the registration screen. You'll note the, the green here. That you can have a date stamp there indicating that you have confirmed this registration. And you can have, when you do an email confirmation, have that automatically stamped. OK, did we get any questions in that round you want to deal with now? Sure, we can do that. Uh, when you send a quick email to the class, does it go as plain text? Your choice. I mean, uh, that, well, I take that back. Um, normally, that is a plain text file. I don't think we've got uh, HTML support for the class level email blast. Cheryl, are you listening? Can we do an HTML in the course level email blast? Uh, you know that uh, I don't think we've got that specified. I think that's pretty much a text only uh, uh, email. And again, what I think the question was that when you're in a class and you do uh, quick email to class, that is text only. That, that's our that's our uh, feeling on that. Okay. 
And one more about that sending quick email to class, and I'm going to read Terry's question because she worded it perfectly. Um, does everybody see everybody else's email? Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. No, none of the emails that go out of student manager's email system have that uh, two with everybody in the list. Absolutely not. Bad, 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 and we do not do that. Very good. All righty. Okay, back to back to the shoe. All right, emailing registrations in a course, and we've kind of gone through that. Uh, the ability to select our list. And this is the report we didn't see because there were no students with email addresses. But that quick email report will show who are the students that have an email address, who do not. And again, those would be the ones, if you have a class cancellation, you'd need to call them or uh, you know, get some other way to communicate to them to let them know that information you're emailing to everybody else. Um, so again, you can send that out. Again, if we said uh, we are sure that is a uh, text-only type message. Um, other reasons to email a class. Well, again, the, you've changed the location, time, uh, reminder what to bring, where uh, bring a number two lead pencil and uh, art paper, wear loose fitting clothing and tennis shoes, whether promoting a class, inviting them to bring a friend. Um, I'm curious. Uh, show of hands. Let, let's get the show of hands. How many people out there have used the email module for um, in the name or in the class level to try to drum up some other business. Hey, we've got pl uh, five seats available. If you'd like to bring a friend to this class, make sure to let them know. Sign up at blah blah blah. Anybody do that? Show, raise your hand, Lori. Give them the info. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Click on the little yellow hand, or raise your hand, and just click on it once because then, then it counts you. Now you I can see that. Twice, yeah. We got a few. Good. 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 Yeah. Very good. Well, good for you guys. That's that's a good tool to use. Uh, faculty email. Uh, again, on the emailing rosters to instructors, there's a link on the course on the name or on the on the course screen. And again, um, email the roster to instructor. There's no one in this class, so we've got to find a class that's got some people in it. We good? Um, we're in the class, and now we're going to go quick reports, emailing a roster to the class. Oh, I have a correction related to that blast for the email. Cheryl tells me it does support HTML copy. So whoever asked that question, that answer is yes. OK, back to the roster format. When you're sending an email roster to the instructor, this is not a pretty thing. But you can pick a format, names, name only, uh, all students, again, yes. And it'll give a list of the students with the data that you've sent, with the name of the e uh, email of the instructor uh, sent to CH. And again, you as the sender can add other notes. You know, this, this time, time be on time for the class. Dang it. Thank you. So again, you can add other notes to this class before you send it. OK, I believe that's that, all the students and the email, and as we've said. OK, math email, do email. Now, um, this is the math email tool works as such. You take a report any report, and I'm going to use mailing labels because that's probably as good a place to run your mass emails. And this is, again, going to mass emailing a group of people in your database. Uh, so you go to the report system, modify a report, and I've got one already set up. We're going to pick interest code of computer or communications. And I happen to have a do email report. What you do is just basically create a report expression with just after and open quote equal do email close friends close friends. That will add the email mass email launcher to a report. So when you run the report, we don't 
need to do anything with this report. Close, no. When you run this report, you will see the people. And after you say no, you will get the mass email wizard. Um, and again, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Do we have show? OK, what's the last poll question, Lori? Uh, about HTML. Email. OK. Um, well, this is one that we're getting to that now. Um, but I want to show of hands right now. How many people out there have used the mass email wizard, this mass blast email wizard? Give me a show of hands if you have used it. All right, Connie, good for you. Kathy, Kevin, I don't see a lot of names there. Sherry, OK. As a matter of fact, Chuck, we've got two or three people who are saying, hey, you went over that too fast, and go back and, and do that again. So. All right, then I'm, let me cancel this and just keep the hands up, those of you that answered. What I said is, how do you go in and add the do email function for the mass email blast to a report? I'm going to suggest mailing labels. Um, I'm going to modify so we can see what you put in. I already have a report that has this on. But they can modify any mailing label. You have to run a query of some kind, some sort, to get there. Uh, select and interest. And is a good one, because it comes from the course itself. Sure. If I could just spell. OK, I'm going to pull up a report here that I have already added the do email to, and it's going to whine about CRM. This is where we are in the report editor. We're looking at the expression box that I've already created, but this is what you put into it. There is help about that in the help guide. The online help in Student Manager has a link about how to use the email module. and. We'll talk about how do you do mass emails, the mass email wizard. And uh, there's a way to show how do you go about using the wizard, how to put it on the report. So you do have help on the system. Now, the question is, keep the hands up. How many of you have used the mass email wizard that we're looking at on the screen here? Uh, let, me, let me close this and get to where the report actually shows. OK, we sh it, it runs the report. And now we get Mass Email Wizard. Raise your hand if you have run a report using Mass Email Wizard in your system. And uh, OK, we've got a few that have been doing that. Good. All right, well, uh, again, and the way it works, for those of you that haven't, is that once you add that to a report, any names in that report that have emails will get the following email. You can put in a subject matter, uh, new class offering from Aceware, you, who the sender is, sender name. You can either put a message on the fly or make a text or HTML uh, box to send. Um, many of the email blasts that I send out to, cut to you guys, um, I do the mass email wizard to send that out. Um, and the type in message on the fly is super simple. Uh, you open up a box and type in what you want to say. Hey, new class uh, next July 1st on coding in Aceware 10, no, 1.30, 30 p.m. Sign up. You have to, no spell checker, sorry, on the webinar. And then you could actually paste in the link. Now again, it, this is text right here. And I didn't put in HTML because I don't know HTML. But I could go to the website and actually copy the webinar link, copy the link, paste it in my box. And then when I do. At this point, it hasn't been sent yet. I can choose to send myself a copy. I can include the first name as a salutation. I would always typically, depending on the email, exclude names who have asked to have no email. And we'll talk about that. Uh, exclude my signature line, hit the Next button. And at this point, if I hit Finished, it would go bang them out. 
So that is the mass email wizard approach. I'm going to pause a second, see if there's some buzz generated by that. We've got time-wise, I think we're in pretty good shape. Time-wise, I think we're in pretty decent shape. Any questions on that previous process? Nope. After you went over it again, things seem to settle right down. Very good. All right. So on with the show. Mass email, do email. That was mass email. Uh, the mass email receipt wizard. <clears throat> again, uh, uh, there is the ability to do a mass receipt option. And instead of using the just after of straight do email, you'd put inside the email parentheses the word receipt in quotes. <clears throat> and then that will basically run a set of mass receipts out to a group of people. Uh, some people like to mass batch their receipts rather than sending them directly after a registration. Um, I'm going to, probably not many people do that, so I'm going to go past that. Uh, and well, and again, when you when you run it, it actually gives you a ability to kind of include some custom setup kind of things. I'm curious, has anybody show of hands? Okay, get ready, guys. Hold your hold, hold your on, hands over your mouse. Let me get the hands ready. Hold hold on. Let me How? Put the hands down. Close them all down. Close them. Got it. Okay. Go How many people have used the mass email receipt wizard? Give me a show of hands. Uh, again, I'm not sure a lot of people know about that, and. I, I don't know. I'm thinking that probably most everybody would send the receipt the minute people register because you want to get it to them right away. And the only reason for maybe doing a mass approach would be if you had third-party registrations on behalf of students and you wanted to just send them out the week before, perhaps. So anyway, all right, thanks, guys. Um, OK, mass email wizard. Mail Merge Wizard. Now, Mail Merge Wizard is a cool tool. And I know, I don't know if we got Lindsay online today, but um, Lindsay from SMU has been doing that. And it allows you to customize an email so that you, uh, in essence, it lets you do mail merge, just traditional mail merge uh, with uh, email. Uh, and you can use it to send announcements of upcoming classes. Um, again, uh, that is something that um, allows you to, and the, the format for doing that uses the form um, just after do merge mail. And again, uh, as the warning here, it does not have an E in the merge mail. So it's M-E-R-G, no E, mail. Um, Model templates. Now let's talk about the email templates a bit. I don't know that we've covered that in the, in the system so, or in the PowerPoint. So let me switch to the names table. Um, under module catalog, email templates is where you can edit the different email templates for both merge mail and for receipts. Um, now, the email templates are actually stored in the catalog codes table. Um, and basically, they are coded as a E kind. That is, the category is called E. Um, the, this is an example of a, um, a, a, a mass merge email that would be a deadbeat notice. Uh, in the body of the email, if you don't have any um, data that is unique data, you can just enter it as straight text. And you see up above, this is just straight text. Now, what you may not have noticed there is that in version 7, uh, 46 or newer, I'm on version 48, if you are wanting to look at a, if you had a lot of text here and you wanted to see the whole text without having to scroll down, you double click in the box and it opens up into full screen view. So again, I'll wait for the oohs and ahs. Anybody who's been trying to edit email data in the teeny boxes now can just double click. And Bill, that's why you need to make sure you get on the new freaking version. Uh, and ditto with the email body. You can open up that body and actually see all of the data there. Now, while we're in the body, this is typically on a receipt or on a um, submerged mail. You typically put most of the personalization in the body of the email. And 
the note said it's not for the faint of heart because this uses uh, D-base syntax where text is enclosed in quotes. You use pluses to then in, uh, add data fields. Namer RGID is, of course, the function that gives the full name, first, middle, last. Uh, CR2LF is a convention that is a line, two line feeds, or two carriage returns and a line feed. You've got course name, line feed, the word dates, the field dates, et cetera, et cetera. And then down here at the bottom, you'll note uh, that's just straight text again. Uh, so we'll go on to another one. There is a, a credit uh, announcement, an escrow credit report, uh, escrow body, which is old. Here is an email body reference that has some HTML code in it. And this is actually not proper HTML because you should uh, lead with the HTML coding in the header. I don't know. Here's one. This is an HTML confirmation where you actually have the HTML body data in there. Now, um, we've got the question is whether or not you use HTML. I have a question. Of the people in our group, how many of you know enough about HTML that when you saw this, you said, oh, that's HTML, as opposed to shrieking and running out of the room? So raise your hand. Close the hands, Lori. <laughs> Close the hands. Yes, sir. Close the hands. OK, again, raise your hand if you know anything about HTML, that you recognize that, uh oh, this is HTML. We've got a few. Oh, well, we've got several. Good for you guys. OK. Well over half of them. Yeah, I'm impressed. We've got a savvy group today. Uh, but anyway, um, so that is the HTML element. Um, and uh, one of the big things about the HTML, as you know, is that uh, you're not supposed to have line fees, hard carriage returns in here. And actually, again, version 48 uh, will now strip. We thought we were stripping them automatically, and we didn't think we were. So now we've got that set up. It'll strip the um, uh, the elements. OK, so that is uh, some options on the mail merge. Um, let's go back to our slideshow. And the idea, there are templates. Um, show up class. Now, the show up class function is the best way to look at it. I'm going to log on to the website and show you what it can do. I'm not sure anybody has done that. but. On the ACE Web demo, if you have created a, site, a link in the system, excuse me, if you've made an account, and if you go back in and log in, you'll see an example of show up class. Uh, well, it would help if I had uh, Well, I, let's find one that has may have been, oh, Cheryl, what's your log on for the Ace Web demo? OK, this is the kind of thing that the show up class function does, is that you can embed it in an email. What it will do is actually look at the interest codes of the student. And based on each individual student that logs through the system, it'll look at their interest codes. And again, in case you're not sure again about interest codes, this is the any codes in the interest code area. It looks to see, are there upcoming classes that have a subject code that match the interest code of the student and are upcoming? And then it will show those. It will show those to the student. And in the email, it would actually include those in the student. If you have AceWeb, you can actually link the class to an AceWeb uh, registration page so that when the student is getting this and think of this as an email that they've opened, they can click on the class and actually go to AceWeb, your AceWeb, and at the class status page, page ready to enroll. So again, uh, that, that we're not going to go into detail on that right now. Uh, that's a topic uh, for future coverage. It is covered uh, in a bit more detail in the email tips uh, webinar that's in the archive area. 
but I'm going to stop and see if there are questions in the process uh, up to this point. And this is kind of our, the two different blasts. We've gone through both of them now, or at least showed um, do email, quick email, and then merge mail. Questions, Lori, that are popping up at this point? Uh, nothing I want to handle at the moment. OK, I am going to go back. I do have an example of merge mail. And let's see if we can get one to run. Mailing labels, I've got, I'm not going to modify. I'll just run through the report. We've added that just after to it. Interest code is, again, computer, our communications. I now have the merge mail report. I look at the names. I say no to print. And now we get the merge mail launcher. And so we've got all of the emails that are in the system here. Uh, so if I wanted to do a marketing email, I'm going to do, I have a choice, one email per ID, native format. Typically, you don't do. And then a transcript format. And again, I don't know if people know this, but you can do mass emails of transcripts to students. So that's a feature in there uh, that, that you can do. Uh, I'm going to select this particular report. Now, the cool thing about this report is that it will actually give you a preview of what this report is going to look like. And this one, I believe, is that example of show up class. So whatever student I'm setting on must have an ACEWORK code because it's showing me, showing them upcoming classes that relate to ACEWORK. There's one in April, or one in August. There's one in September. Uh, and then I hit fire away, and it would send an email to everybody in that report and put in the courses coming up that's, that, that, that matches their interest. OK, there's the past email. Email marketing. And this is, a, OK, why are you here? Well, most people really would like to do email marketing. Um, there is obviously a whole study about email. And I don't know if some of you are, are LEARN members. You'll notice that LEARN just announced an email marketer certificate program. And I'm somewhat. It's basically another attempt for LEARN to be able to extract money from you to get a certification. But the point is, they're recognizing there's money to be made in telling people how to do email. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can get email help without having to pay LEARN for it. So I will just, uh, not that I don't like LEARN, but uh, you have other options. And we'll show you some at the end. Uh, our tips are, I guess, email should complement other marketing. I don't think anybody really says, and all of the good, do, good deals about email benefit, it's part of the mix, and it should complement your other stuff. Uh, the preview pane, and I think what we're talking here, and I don't, I turned off my email. Let's see if I've got uh, email works. I don't have that. Um, is that when you're, well, maybe I do. Hang on a second. Uh, well, the preview pane is what we're talking about, is that when you're on, uh, let's go to Gmail here. I want to make sure we know our terminology here. And I should be able, I'm going to my Google account. Is that when you click on an, on an element, you typically have, in a preview, the top, oh, whatever, 10, 15 lines of your email are the part that is uh, what shows on the preview of the screen. Lead with your best stuff. Don't hide the good stuff at the bottom. Your first two or three sentences, everybody tells you, just like print matter, those first two or three sentences are the ones that's most important. Uh, dates are good. They give you that idea of action. You've got something that you need to do. Um, be true to your st st style and tone. And again, uh, if you're doing non-credit personal interest classes or enrichment classes, you can be funny, silly, um, you know, intimate. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, uh, friendly, as opposed to a business to business or a uh, executive ed for university administrators. You're going to be a whole lot more formal and and professional. Uh, short, timely and informative. 
Uh, again, the idea just because your email does not cost you anything to press send, if you don't have a message that resonates with the people and you don't take the time to decide who you're sending it to, uh, it is actually, it can damage you. And, and again, in multiple ways. Uh, provide a link in your email to whatever else you're trying to promote. And again, this big, big deal. No cost does not mean that you don't have to work on it. Uh, email HTML. Now, we've been bouncing around. Lori, I think we've got a, an HTML question here. And we, I think we've got a little bit of a poll, uh, of a uh, uh, preview. Give us the poll. Would you like to know how to send HTML emails from student manager? All right. Well, I know we've got a few um, that already do that. All right. So we do have some. All right. And again, um, you've got, uh, come on, guys. And again, if you already have done HTML emails, certainly uh, uh, you can either one or two, you know, we'd like to or we, we'd like to learn more. Obviously, you know, you might do it, but you might want to do it better. So, all right, well, that gives us a gives us an idea of uh, of, of what we're doing on that, or, or I some ideas. Don't think that we would get a hundred percent for this this poll because we've had hundred percent on our last. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a couple happened. people who haven't voted, so yeah, so yeah that's we're okay. Close it anyway. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the we we're okay. Here's what we're trying to do. Lori and I are looking for a person to teach an HTML. Uh, class. It will be a charge one because we're probably going to need to be four or five hours long. So it'll be about four or five sessions. We'll end up paying an instructor to teach that for us. You'll be charged. You'll have to pay something to take that one because it's going to be an actual class class. But we're basically aiming at trying to create uh, a class that's HTML and Aceware uh, and to help you out with that. Now, back to you and Aceware and your tech. Again, when you're dealing with HTML, your tech may know a lot about Student Manager, but really is not an HTML expert. So again, if you need HTML help, uh, you know, your Aceware tech, that's honestly, that's not part of the support agreement is to help you debug HTML code. So that's why I said we're trying to get a online class uh, that we'll have available for you as a resource uh, that, that they, you be able to sign up for. OK, uh, that's a little caveat about that. So where are some HTML resources? And these are ones that, Lori, I think you've used these. You might describe a bit about these. Um, the first two are just really good resources. They, they usually complement each other, the HTML dog. Uh, they haven't updated that one as recently as they have the other one. But the page tutor, by golly, when I was first starting out, that was a wonderful thing. That was better than the dummy series. So I like page tutor a lot. Very good. Very good. OK, now, uh, e marketing resources, focusing on emailing. And again, uh, I mentioned the, uh, the Learn uh, Certified Email Marketer program that they're now going to want you to sign up for and spend a bunch of money on. Uh, there are resources you can sign up for that are free. Uh, Marketing Profs has a free newsletter. They, again, do have a premium subscription that you get a little bit more for that does cost a couple hundred a year. Uh, we subscribe to it, and I do think it's worthwhile. Marketing Sherpa is another source uh, that has uh, email letters. And again, um, they send you once a week a short um, e-newsletter with tips and tricks. Uh, again, great resource if you are into e-marketing. Again, not necessarily just email, but you know, website design, uh, ways to use the new social media, i.e., Twitter, Facebook, etc. Uh, good, good sources. Um, I would invite people if you've got a uh, uh, an email marketing or an electronic marketing resource that's free and that you like, uh, put the URL in the, uh, put the URL in the uh, uh, blah, uh, the that's note. The Thank you. And uh, we'll post it on the screen here. 
Uh, Lori, I think what I'll have you do is send me a question or send me a note with the URL links on, and I can put it on at the last page of our uh, uh, of our show today. Okay. All right. So write down any email resources that you guys use that you happen to think are good. Okay, back on email. Now again, here are some things about a couple of tips about uh, things to watch for when you're doing email, uh, and, and and so that you not get on the spam rating. Uh, number one, the word free, um, big spam uh, flag. Uh, use of exclamation points. Use lots of uh, punctuation with the dot 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 question mark question mark. Save affordable bargain. Uh, register now. That's a bit of a problem uh, because everybody, you want people to register. 100% uh, get paid. Now, of course, that's the get paid schemes. Um, a few suggestions. Test your, your file. Um, again, uh, if you're doing a mass mail, and again, and you've done all your homework and you've made sure you've got your list that you're going to use that is interested in the email and your body copy is good. Before you do the mass blast to 5,000 students, create a test course or a test set of names. And so go into your system, pick a handful of names, create them an interest code that's test, testing email, and then add that test email to a couple of people. And again, I would have them where you've got emails, Chuck at Aceware, I would put in a couple of people with an email of your domain, uh, find somebody with a Yahoo account, find somebody with a Gmail account, uh, you know, two or three accounts that are different email providers, and then go in and do a test of your email body to that test EM group, check your people and see how it came through, that the links are correct, before you do the blast to everybody in the world. On your mass emails, always have an opt-out opportunity. It is the law. Uh, and that will, if you want to get on a blacklist, don't put in an unsubscribe option on an email that is a mass advertising email. Um, check your spam content rating deliverability by using web t uh, spam checkers. They're free. Uh, some of them ask you to sign up to, to get an account, <clears throat> but they don't charge you for that. Um, let's see. I want to go back to the name record, and we kind of blanked over this. One of the things about uh, the name record is if you've got people who do not want to get emailed, that is for mass emails, that is what the EXCL button is for, is for you to be able to tell them, exclude this name from my mass emails. Now, when you're doing a receipt, that ignores that. Uh, when you're doing a class-level announcement, you can choose uh, to ignore that. Um, so if we did course info and we did quick report, send email to class, all students, da -da -da -da, we're going to see what we get here. Pretty sure that we have an option to avoid that. Send it. No. Okay, include my statement. Oh. Now, actually, the mass broadcast email sends to everybody in the class that has an email, irrespective of their status as a do not mail. And I got to thinking about that. If you were doing this to promote upcoming emails, that you got to be careful with that. Um, again, kind of the rules of email or the etiquette would be that if you've got a business relationship with somebody and you're talking about you know, needing to tell them information administratively about the class or information about a product that is similar to the one they already bought, then you're, you know, you're, you're relatively you know, low impact on the email spam business. Lori, any other thoughts on that? I think that General. No, I think you're good. Speaking of spam, okay, so let's kind of talk about this, the blacklist issue. We had a client that get blacklisted because they were blasting their email list. And again, uh, the blacklisting comes from a variety of uh, ways, but uh, there are, there are third-party monitoring systems 
that come in, and if they see that a particular server or IP address, which is where mail comes from, is throwing out what they call spam, they'll put you on a blacklist, and none of your email gets delivered. Bad, bad thing. How do you do that? Well, make sure that you explain to people why they're getting this email. And again, kind of stay on the up and up. Um, make it clear how you can unsubscribe, that you always have an unsubscribe option. Use a known return address. And again, uh, some of you, I think most everybody has a college or university address, so that should be good. If you've got privacy policies, sometimes that's a nice reference. Um, and again, have value information. You know, send stuff to people that you think the people are going to be interested in. Don't beat the golden goose to death. You know, and again, the idea of um, you know steak three times a day if you're a steak lover eventually is going to get old. You know, don't do it all the time. Again, the idea of our excessive use of some of the punctuation elements. But the best way to avoid looking like a spammer and to not be blacklisted. Just email information to students that they would be interested in hearing about. And again, uh, email and spam is like weeds in a garden. For those of you that are gardeners, and as an old uh, botanist, agronomist, the, a weed is just a plant that is out of place. And spam, to me, is might be the best thing in the world to you. It's what the student is interested in. And so again, if you are careful with your message and careful in the selection of your criteria for who you're going to email, then you've gone a long way toward both improving your marketing and also avoiding getting on blacklists. OK, uh, questions, comments, we've kind of run to the end. Uh, use that SM Online help on the optional modules email. There is an archive webinar. Uh, on the system under webinar archives. We did one a while back on, uh, b b b b where is it at? Email tips and tricks. Uh, and again, more information about that. So um, that's what we're here for. Uh, next webinar, mark it on your calendar, hasn't been released yet. Um, July 1, 1 1.30, it'll be another repeat, uh, coding with student manager. But the importance of coding how you know we code our records so that for email we're going to make sure we send the information to people who want to know it. Okay, Lori, let's see what questions we haven't answered. I think we got through all wow. of them right as they came in. I know okay. we were good right. today. <laughs> well, this has been a good group, and again, we appreciate you taking time out of the summer to uh, to get in here. Um, I, I'm I'm going to stutter step. I'm trying to think. Uh, if anybody who's been using email would want to, uh, would think I forgot something, or if they're using the email module for something that we haven't mentioned here, uh, we we know we're not, we can't cover the universe of ideas. So do uh, I'll I'll kind of stutter step a minute. Did anybody have any reference websites or email newsletters that they found useful? Did you get any takers on that? Nominating a, 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 a well, I had one resource. who told me they use the same ones you do. So Good. Okay. You, you must be right on top of things. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, listen. Uh, we will again mark your calendars for the coding webinar. Um, again, I'm going to. If you're the manager, you're the you're the uh, the chief. Uh, you're the chief operator at your site. One of the things that uh, Lori and uh, uh, Cheryl put together under the webinar archive area is the webinar self-study guide. Again, great resource because for those of you who may be new to the webinars, all of these webinars are available to you. And this is kind of a great way to kind of decide among the office who it is you need to make sure you be, you're inviting to these webinars. So, or that you down, I should say, you download the webinars out of archive and get them to read them. So read them, watch them. <laughs> OK, well, if there are no other questions, Lori, I guess we could let people go. All righty. Have an excellent afternoon. All righty, everybody. Take care. We'll see you on the 1st of July. Bye-bye, everybody.